A cosmonaut had been traveling on the edge of the solar system for half a year by himself. Proud that he is, he can't help but worry about the life and wife he had to leave back on Earth for his solo mission. After discovering an ancient creature in the bowels of his ship, said creature lend a helping hand to the lonely cosmonaut. The movie begins with a cosmonaut named Jakub Prochaska getting patched in for an interview for the Eurospace program. Jakub's solo journey outside the Earth has been going on for 189 days, and he is currently on the outskirts of Jupiter. Jakub talked about the reason for his solo journey, and it was the Chopra cloud. He was planning on collecting and analyzing the particles that make up the cloud. Jakub was then interviewed by a young girl named Anna, who refers to him as the loneliest man in the world for being the farthest away from anyone in history. Jakub denied being lonely, but his expression says otherwise. Jakub's sleep was disturbed by the loud sound the toilet was making. He requested for it to be fixed, but was denied since their priority is the broken cameras. Peter, the technician, asked if Jakub was sleeping, and Jakub answered that he was having a hard time doing so. Jakub asked about Lenka, who hasn't called him for some time now, but even Peter hasn't heard anything from her. Jakub's commanding officer, Commissioner Tuma, was watching Lenka's video message to Jakub. Lenka was talking about planning to divorce Jakub, so Tuma decided not to show the video to Jakub because the latter was already under tremendous pressure and even had to take Dimorkum to temporarily treat his insomnia. Jakub was abruptly woken up from his sleep one night, and when he looked at himself in the mirror, he saw something crawling underneath his skin. Something crawled up to his nose, and a spider leg came out before going back on. Jakub grunted as he desperately tried to get the spider out of his mouth before he woke up from the nightmare with a gasp, grasping his mouth. The next day, Jakub was finally clear on the Chopra sample collection simulation, and he began working on it. Jakub contacted Peter, who was stressed over the broken cameras on the ship, and requested to get someone to go to his home to talk to Lenka since the latter wasn't calling him. He sat in front of Check Connect until the screen flickered and a voice he couldn't recognize was his heart. Jakub asked who the owner of the voice was, but his question was left unanswered. He contacted Peter and asked if Check Connect was hacked, which Peter answered no to. Peter then informed Jakub that Lenka was visiting her mother for a couple of days. Jakub got woken up by a thud somewhere in the ship. He went to the room where the sound was coming from and saw a huge extraterrestrial arachnid looking back at him. He closed the door and contacted Peter, asking if they somehow had a secret camera installed in the toilet. Peter said there was indeed a camera for safety measures, but it was out. Peter opened the door to the toilet again and floated away as the arachnid crawled out of the room. The arachnid spoke in the same voice Jakub heard through Check Connect and reassured Jakub that he meant no harm. But a frightened Jakub went to the airlock and suited up, asking Peter to deploy the decontaminant in hopes of killing the arachnid. Peter couldn't understand what was happening since Jakub avoided telling him about the alien arachnid, but he still did as Jakub said and Jakub waited until the decontamination was over. Jakub felt that something wasn't right when he suddenly remembered a memory he had of Lenka. Peter, who still didn't know what was happening, advised Jakub to see a psychiatrist once he got back home, explaining how being in outer space alone for a long time can be very detrimental to mental health. Jakub saw the arachnid again and decided to talk to the alien. He learned that the arachnid had been traveling to the edges of the solar system when he saw the ship. The arachnid had always been curious about humans and even studied a lot about them, yet despite learning a lot about humans, the arachnid still couldn't understand the human that stood before him. The extraterrestrial arachnid claimed that he only entered the ship without permission when he sensed Jakub's loneliness. Still unsure if the arachnid is real or just a figment of his imagination, Jakub tried to touch the creature but was warned not to as the extraterrestrial arachnid's kind doesn't like being touched, for it is a violation. Jakub hurriedly went to sleep, drinking a lot of dimorcum as he wanted to think this was just him dreaming. He dreamt about Lenka before waking up with a gasp. But even awake, Jakub was still dreaming. He felt like he was actually watching himself argue with Lenka and he was confused about what was happening. He saw the arachnid and asked if he was the one doing it to him. It turns out that the extraterrestrial arachnid can enter his mind and read his thoughts, dreams, and memories. The extraterrestrial explained that it seemed like Jakub's wife was pulling away and the alien just wishes to assist in Jakub's emotional distress. Meanwhile, Lenka was telling her mother about her big decision and wanting to move to a certain place in the country for pregnant women who are alone. Lenka opened up to her mother about how she loved Jakub and how ambitious he was, but that she felt like she was invisible. For days that the arachnid stayed at the spacecraft, Jakub stayed distant and distrustful towards the creature. When Jakub found the arachnid back in the room where he first found him, sleeping while hugging the humming tube that attracted him, he was amused, to say the least. He decided to open up a bit to the arachnid and even gave the extraterrestrial the name Hanus when he learned that the arachnid didn't have a name. 
Hainus was the name of the person Jakub's dad used to talk about the man who built the astronomical clock in Prague, which measured the movements of the stars and planets. Hainus became Jakub's friend, and with Hainus with him, Jakub felt less lonely. While talking about the meaning of an opera song called Rusalka, Hainus made Jakub remember the time when Jakub and Lenka were still falling in love. Jakub looked sad as he pleaded with Hainus to stop doing things to him. That night, Jakub woke up with a gasp as he was suddenly hit with his childhood memories. He talked to Hainus and the arachnid confessed that he entered Jakub's thoughts but stopped when he felt uncomfortable because of the amount of guilt Jakub was keeping inside. Hainus asked him about his past and Jakub opened up about the traumatic memory of his father's death. His father was a member of a communist party and was an informant for them. His father was a good man who did bad things and it traumatized Jakub greatly when he witnessed the death of his father. By agreeing to take the solo mission, Jakub hoped it would allow him to atone for his father's sins. Hainus sensed this and he advised Jakub to focus more on his pregnant wife and be something his father wasn't, a good father. Commissioner Tuma visited Lenka to talk about the video message Lenka sent. She admitted that she didn't send the video to Jakub because it is her job to protect Jakub and she knows that letting Jakub see that message would put his mental health in jeopardy. Tuma wanted to understand why Lenka decided to divorce his husband and leave him right when he was so far from Earth. Lenka didn't explain. She didn't have to. Before Tuma leaves, she reminds Lenka of when the latter asked Jakub why they still call each other when there's only silence between them. Tuma states that the silence is the point. Jakub and Lenka are silent every time they call each other, and that was fine because what matters is that they're silent together. The Furta collection simulation had concluded and Jakub had gotten close to the Chopra cloud. When he saw tiny pics of the Chopra cloud inside the ship, he was in awe and tried to get them but failed. Hainus states that it was the grain from the beginning and nothing can ever hold or contain it. Jakub watched as the grains left the spacecraft through the window and he called Control to tell him about what he witnessed. But no one was answering and Jakub realized he had lost communication with the Control. Jakub and Hainus watched as they neared the beginning. Jakub was concerned about what was going to happen but Hainus reassured him that it was hard to describe and perhaps they would experience the beginning together. Later on, Hainus kept on trying to talk to Jakub about Lenka but Jakub seemed to be distant when the topic was his wife. So Hainus made him see the things that happened to his wife while he wasn't around. Due to how ambitious Jakub was, he neglected his pregnant wife. Lenka used to carry another baby, their first offspring, but she had a miscarriage. They lost their first baby and Jakub was not there. Lenka was suffering and Jakub was not there and he didn't want to be there with his wife either because he had a dream that didn't include Lenka. Jakub tears up as Hainus asks him if the pain his choices caused is valuable to him. Jakub continued working and Hainus was upset that his human friend was still too focused on his discoveries. So he showed him another memory, the time when Lenka cried as she spoke of how proud she was of Jakub. But Hainus made Jakub see the truth behind those tears. Proud Lenka may be, but she was also hurt because her husband was drifting away from her and Jakub was letting it happen because of his ambitions. Hainus made Jakub realize his wrongdoings and he expressed his disappointment towards Jakub. The latter had become selfish and did not even make an effort to understand his wife. Jakub's loneliness was self-inflicted. He chose himself over connecting with those who matter and he is now facing the consequences of his choices. Hainus was so disappointed in Jakub and decided to leave. Jakub touched Hainus to stop him from leaving, but Hainus got angry and pinned him down, warning him before leaving. Hainus begged for him to come back. Hainus' departure hurt Jakub, who felt even more lonely than ever, and Jakub cried as he finally admitted to himself just how wrong he was. Jakub fixed the communications and contacted Peter again, reassuring the latter that everything was fine. He firmly told Peter to visit Lenka and help him talk to his wife again. Peter did as Jakub said and let Lenka hear what Jakub wanted to tell her. Jakub apologized for everything he had done, neglecting Lenka and living his life for all the wrong reasons. Jakub voiced out how he wanted to redo everything and choose to be a better man for Lenka. He apologized before hanging up. Night came, and Hainus came back, making Jakub feel relieved. Hainus claimed he didn't want Jakub to face the beginning alone and decided to return to his human friend. Jakub noticed that Hainus was having a hard time breathing and asked what was wrong. Hainus revealed that when the Garamps, the term Hainus uses to call what destroyed his kind, came to consume the entire tribe, Hainus fled, but he fled too late. Jakub was saddened to hear that, and for the first time, Hainus let loose and embraced his human friend. Jakub was about to enter the Chopra cloud and it was being broadcast to the whole country. Commissioner Tuma expressed how proud the Czech Republic is of Jakub for beating South Korea and becoming the first to investigate the purple specter that has been haunting the skies. Jakub finally entered the Chopra cloud and deployed FURTA for sample collection, but an interference occurred. Unexpectedly, Jakub noticed that Hainus was gasping and drifting out of the spacecraft. Jakub ignored the control team as he worried over Hainus. 
Meanwhile, Control was panicking over a system failure from FURTA. They recorded numerous malfunctions and ordered Yakub to abort the mission or else it would be extremely dangerous for Yakub. Yakub ignored them. He could care less about what they were saying as the only thing he cared about was saving his extraterrestrial arachnid friend. Yakub went to the airlock and put on the EMU, informing Peter that he was going out of the spacecraft. Peter tried to convince him not to leave the spacecraft, but Yakub didn't listen and drifted towards Hainus. He hugged Hainus as soon as he reached him and asked if the arachnid was fine. Hainus commended Yakub for his bravery in saving him, but the Garamps will soon weaken him enough to consume his flesh. They only had a little time before Hainus met death. They continued drifting as they looked over the Chopra cloud. Then Yakub recalled how he almost drowned when he was still young. Hainus reassured Yakub that it wasn't the end and pulled him into the center of the Chopra cloud. There, Yakub discovered everything about himself and the universe. Chopra Cloud isn't only the beginning but also the ending. It contains Yakub's past and future. It contains every single aspect of Yakub's life. Himself, Lenka, Hainus, every heartbreak, and every happiness. Everything. Yakub was astonished by how little he knew about the universe and he finally remembered what matters most, what he really wanted. He recalled the moments that he fell in love with Lenka and he finds himself falling even deeper. Seeing that his job was done and Yakub had finally learned, Hainus spoke his last words. Hainus began and ended in Chopra Cloud, but it wasn't the end for Yakub yet. He still has a life to go back to, he just had to listen to the silence. Yakub watched as Hainus slowly disintegrated into specks before completely disappearing and then stared into the light in silence. On Earth, Lenka waited for any news of Yakub as she looked up at the purple cloud in the skies with a smile. She received a call and, upon answering, heard a female voice speaking in Korean. Then she heard Yakub's voice. Yakub told her that if he had known then what he knows now, he never would have left. Lenka replied that if she had known then what she knows now, she would still choose to love Yakub. 